So how, in fact, does capitalism turn rights into privileges? Because that's exactly what capitalism does. When somebody is free from the restraints of others, to take resources and do with them as they will, that is a true right. But once you attach a system that involves a certain material and process affiliated with that material, such as money and the, fact, and the uh, act of trade, well, in this setting, what you would previously had, had as a right, such as the food here, if you could grow this yourself and you didn't have to pay for anything, but then someone comes along and says, I hereby declare ownership of this food or this land or whatever, and they kick you off or they subjugate you through whatever means necessary, and then they basically say, okay, you will now work for me, and I will sell what you produce, the food here, and I will sell it for a price. At that point, what was once a right, the right to food, has become a privilege enforced on you by people who want to make a profit off of your need for that food so that now, instead of having a right to food, so you just have a right to survive, now, that right has become a privilege at the, at the uh, behest of the people who want to profit from it. So capitalism, you know, contrary to what libertarians might tell you, or even some conservatives might think, or even some liberals, capitalism is not humanity's natural state. It is an abstraction. It's something that people who sought power and control imposed on others to basically collect resources, including land, including materials like food and the building blocks for housing and materials for clothing and so on and so forth, so they could make another abstraction for themselves, money, which speaks to another abstraction, profit. Now, profit, of course, doesn't always mean money. It could mean other things. When you win a contest, for instance, you're profiting by being the winner. What do you get? Maybe you get a plaque. Maybe you get a trophy or a medal or something like that. Maybe you do get a little money because you won. But the point of capitalism isn't just making money. It could be anything. And it's rooted in this desire to feel victorious. It's rooted in this desire to beat your competitor. So this, I, I think this actually speaks to why Americans love the various sports that we like so much and why we put so much emphasis on competitive people. Like, why do we idolize people like LeBron James? Or, uh, God, who else? Um, since I'm from the D.C. area, maybe uh, 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 Ovechkin. Alex Ovechkin, I think his name is. And um, why do we? Why did baseball fans here in Baltimore are like this? Why did they idolize people like Cal Ripken? Why do people in Boston like the Red Sox? Why do people in LA like uh, the Dodgers or the Rams? Right? Competition. It's this thrill of knowing that you were victorious. Okay, it's a temporary rush, but you keep resetting your goals. This is something they teach you in capitalism all the time to reset your goals because enough is never enough. It's this constant feeling of winning, dominating. That is the fundamental root of capitalism. Because in capitalism, the, competi the uh, competitive aspect of human nature is applied to the basics for living. So you get food, housing, education, health care, uh, infrastructure, hell, even policing, firefighting, anything and everything could be for profit. And that means you, you do not have any right to those things. They are now privileges. And they were imposed on you by people who sought to turn what could otherwise be a right into a profit-making juggernaut for themselves. That thrill, that rush of godlike status that comes with all that wealth. It's an addiction. It's an addiction that is akin to a drug addiction or alcoholism or nymphomania or gambling, anything like that. Capitalism 
is, as I call it, the system of sin. For all you religious folks out there, you might understand where I'm coming from with this. Capitalism basically is predicated on the exploitation and promotion and encouragement, really, of the seven deadly sins. Think about it, guys. Greed is number one, right? Lust. Because you want something, it's attractive. You want it because you want to feel attractive yourself. Envy. Other people have more than you. You want to have that too. Capitalism provides that the means to do that, right? Um, uh, what is it? Sloth. Use that one, right? If you got, if you end up getting all the money, you can be as nasty and disgusting as you want to be, and you don't have to have a care in the world, right? Some people want to be like that, but they have to put in the work, right? So that greed, that lust, that envy, they can do the sloth later on if they work hard enough. And that's the theory. That's the theory. Pride. Because the pride comes when you win in capitalism. The pride comes knowing that you beat your competitors, that you have the money, you have the power, and they don't. And this is exactly what detaches us from our own humanity and from each other. And it's why capitalism needs to be done away with. Now, obviously, we live in a world where you've got to trade for something, okay? But even in a more socialist setting, you can still have money. You can still trade. You can still build wealth for yourself. It's not like socialism in its true form would lead to um, strictly poor people, big, powerful, good, me. That's not how this really works. All that really was in the past was capitalists concentrating in the state and in the military apparatus in order to exploit the rest of the people. That's what you saw with the communists of the 20th century or the socialists of the 20th century. They thought that by giving power to the government that things could get better. But it turns out, no, all you're doing is transplanting the same set of issues into a different arena. You're taking it out of the private sector, putting it in the public sector. And now in the United States, you know, especially with the overturning of Roe v. Wade that's imminent at this point and other things that will follow, all this tyranny is going to be more and more in the hands of private private sector uh, overboards. You know, corporations looking to make a profit. So everything is going to be for profit. I mean, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to come for Medicare next. They're going to come for uh, Medicaid. They're going to come for the minimum wage. They're going to come for um, any kind of public funding of infrastructure. Um I think they might even try to do that with police and firefighting again, but I think at that point the public might think, oh, wait a minute now. We don't want mercenary armies battling each other here. That's a bad idea. But it wouldn't surprise me if they tried. Okay. Now, once you have a system where, let's say, everybody has money, okay? This is what UBI is meant to do in a socialist setting. Everybody has money. They all pay their taxes, okay? to pay for the public programs needed to keep society running at the most basic levels. At this point, this is as close as we actually can get to making things an actual right in a civilized society. The moment you hand anything like that over to private interests is the moment you lose those rights and they become privileges. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing for some of these things to be privileges, like if you want to buy a computer, for instance, you want to buy the latest fashion of clothing, you want to buy a certain type of cookware or a certain car, whatever, that's fine. But when it comes to the absolute basic minimum, clothing, food, water, housing, or at least basic housing, okay, uh, police, military, uh, utilities, everybody needs certain utilities like electric and gas and uh, uh, water, of course, to go to the home and everything like that. These are healthcare too and education because everybody needs to learn this is going to be these are going to be the basics that any civilized society needs in order to properly function to minimize crime so now we don't have as much reason to lock people up now more people have more economic opportunity in this case and also with a universal healthcare system with healthcare as a right more companies can make more money because prices are kept in check especially if we're voting on our taxes that's like I explained in my last video so if we formed a people's parliament, you know, we could make the decision to say, okay, we can leave certain things up to the private sector and then certain things we want in the public sector. Our votes would determine that. 
And capitalism, if you leave it to its own devices, it tries to make anything and everything into a privilege. Because according to a capitalist, the profit motive is human nature. Money, the drive for wealth, is, is human nature. Capitalism is human nature. They have this fallacy in their mindset that everybody thinks about money and wealth the same way they do. As if it's something that everybody just wants by default. Not necessarily. And what do you mean by wealth? It could be anything in wealth. It could be wealth in spirituality. It could be wealth in your friendships. It could be wealth in the, your family. It could be wealth in, I don't know, your experiences. A wealth of experience. you traveled everywhere. You've seen a lot. You've gained a lot of knowledge that you wouldn't have otherwise. There's a lot of ways to interpret wealth. Because it means different things to different people. We've just, in this country, we're like, oh, wealth means money. Or wealth means a mansion and a yacht or a private jet or something like that. That's strictly materialistic thinking as it applies to capitalism. That's it. And as I said before, of course, capitalism is predicated on the seven deadly sins. So it is the system of sin. If you're a religious person, if you're on the religious right, and you think capitalism is the greatest thing since sliced bread, you think somehow Trump is the greatest thing since Jesus walked the earth, well then, you don't get the point of Christianity. You clearly don't. You've clearly been brainwashed. You clearly don't understand what Christian values really are, what they're all about. You blend the absolute opposite of Christianity with Christianity, and it makes no sense. You know, when Marjorie Taylor Greene, for instance, said, you know, though ain't a bullshit, uh, Andrew Roe v. Wade's victory for God. No, it's not. It's a victory for people who want to impose their own religious views, how they interpret their religion on those others who don't believe the same things they do. It's a way for private companies uh, to try to charge people for abortions more so than they would ever want to spend. It's a way for uh, the prison industry to make more money by having more things outlawed so they can get women in, in prisons to be slave labor so corporations can make more money. I mean... It's not rocket science, guys. It's all about the dollar. It's all about capitalism. This is how capitalism turns rights into privileges. So we need to be thinking long and hard, man. I mean, we don't want to be in a society where every damn thing is strictly for profit. Where everything revolves around everybody having to work until from morning until dawn, until dusk, you know, or even longer to make as little money as possible just so the fat cats up sitting up in the corporate offices can count the greenbacks coming in. There is a fallacy in this, by the way. And that is that you think you keep, pe keep uh, paying people less and less, that they're just going to shut up and take it like good little boys and girls? No, eventually they're going to fight back. And if they don't have the money made to pay for everything that they need in society as a person, you know, if that doesn't, doesn't happen, Eventually, capitalism is going to collapse under its own weight. So capitalism is predicated, in this sense, on the circulation of money, not on the accumulation of money at the top. Okay, the exploitation, the, the ways to make things more illegal, the laws that are rigged in favor of profiteers, that needs to stop. And I think, again, the only reason we really can do this is to form a people's parliament. We, we need proper representation for average people. We don't have it right now. Everything in our system is set up to protect the wealthy and the powerful, the corporations, the capitalists, basically. That's why they love to say America's the greatest country because we have capitalism and democracy. We don't have democracy. We have, cap we have corporatism. We don't have true capitalism because there really is no nobody hustling and bustling doing their own thing. They're not allowed to. The corporations and monopolies make it so that it's impossible. There used to be a time when there were a lot of smaller businesses, but, you know... The end result of capitalism is monopoly. That was the whole point of the game of monopoly. And if you really look at it now, it will teach you that going to prison is part of capitalism, and there's an incentive to lock people up in capitalism. Uh, monopolization is part of capitalism. You losing everything and somebody else gaining everything is part of capitalism. Democracy dies when you have a capitalist system. It's inevitable. So you really got to have all the proper checks and balances in the economy in place. And trying to get capitalists to see this is an exercise in futility. They will never, ever see this. They love money too much. They're addicted to money. 
you're just a means to an end to them. We are just a means to an end to them. So we have to take this economy back by force. And I don't mean necessarily military action or anything like that. I mean, we have to start organizing more co-ops. We need to start uh, forcing these employers to bargain with the working class. And that's what Christian Smalls is doing with Amazon. The latest unionization effort may have failed, but that's not the last one, okay? It'll continue, and we will get more victories. But we got to understand, guys, there are certain things that we can leave up to the private sector. It's totally fine. You know, the evidence shows that that's, that's the best way to do certain things. Not when it comes to the basics. Food prices need to be kept in check. Water and utilities need to be kept in check as far as their prices, not necessarily supply. Healthcare needs to be a right. Education needs to be a right. Infrastructure, policing, firefighting, the military, all of that needs to be paid for with taxes. And the more people we have, the more taxes are paid, the fewer Taxes per capita, people end up paying in the end. You know, maybe not by much, but it still happens. So everything we do in society, it just makes it so that we have to always print more money. We always have to expand the money supply because of the expansion of people. But now that we're expanding into the digital realm, that may not necessarily have to be the case anymore. So we need to rethink that sort of thing as well. But I know I rambled a little bit here, but I hope this helps you guys understand how capitalism turns rights into privileges and um, why we need to get a, do away with capitalism. Because if we continue down this road, more and more things are just going to be made illegal or made le left up to the private sector. And it's going to be more of a dystopian hellscape than it is now if we let it let this go through to its logical conclusion. So, something to think about there.